I'm sure based on the title and thumbnail, you have no idea what's in this box. Whoa, another box. <laughs> That's actually really nice to see uh, this box on the outer, I don't know if it's gonna show on camera really, but the entire box is coated in a plastic uh, type of substance. I don't know, like a giant piece of tape to keep it uh, really nice in the if you, bad weather, or rain or whatever in shipping. So that's really nice. Plus, it's a box inside of a box to protect it for shipping. All right. Got a nice manual here. Itself and a bag of goodies. We'll look at the unit first and we'll go over these goodies and see what we come with. See what's in this here. We got uh, another bag of goodies. Some alligator clips there, so you can go old school and just charge your battery up that way. If you wanted to use this to charge your car battery or something like that, you wouldn't be able to jump start your car if you had a lithium iron phosphate battery in here. But if you had another AGM battery with enough cold cranking amps in here, you could use it as a jump starter. But I'm going to use it to hook up a lithium iron phosphate battery. And it's got a nice uh, 50 amp Anderson connector there. And... Another Anderson connector that's color coded uh, for hooking up to your solar panel because inside here is a 10 amp MPPT solar charge controller. So that's ready to go to these. I really like these Anderson connectors. They're really nice. And let's see what's in this bag. Some kind of a strap. I'll have to look in the manual and see what that's for. Oh, that's probably to hold the battery down inside the box. And your terminal covers for your battery. And uh, again, I'm not sure. Oh, that's probably the clamp, uh, the bolt down to the inside here to hold, again, hold your battery down. An Allen key and a few bolts and screws. We'll look at that later on as we go to put a battery in this baby. All right, so let's get this lid off of here and take a look at what comes inside. Alright, first we'll start with these battery cables that connect to the battery. They come wrapped in some, some tape that you need to take off of there. There's no markings on here, but I would say that they're 4 gauge. And then uh, from this big 175 amp uh, Anderson connector, that looks like 4 gauge as well, that goes over here to the inverter. There's a little little bus bar here that's connecting everything together. There's a, um, there's a fuse right here that looks like it, it uh, would fuse all of these USB ports and this 
cigarette lighter adapter. There's a sheet of plastic over this uh, section here, which protects it from a short circuit, but also creates a nice wind tunnel for the, um, there's a fan here on this side and then a fan over here. So I'm not sure which one's exhaust and one's intake. There's a MPPT charge controller here, that's 10 amp. It has a little temperature gauge here even, or a temperature sensor. I'm not really sure what, uh, if that's gonna do anything, but uh, pretty rare to have an MPPT charge controller have uh, cold temp protection anyway. It may help with a uh, high temp. Um, the 50 amp um, Anderson plugs all look like it's about 10 gauge wire. None of this stuff is marked. It's 10 gauge or whatever the metric equivalent is. I'm not sure. There's uh, four of these 50 amp plugs that are, three of them are bi-directional. So you could actually plug in an additional MPPT charge controller of, of your own outside or another battery to supplement the battery that's in the internals. So it gives you a lot of options. In fact, the, even the 175 amp plug here is bi-directional. So expansion capabilities of this are pretty incredible. It all seems pretty well made. You couldn't possibly build this completely from your own DIY for the price that you can get this for. This is an incredible deal, really. And it just can't get any simpler of a hookup. You bring your own battery, hook it up, and you're ready to go. Let's go ahead and do that now. Inside here is our little Velcro straps. Might be a little difficult to uh, get this in here by myself, but we use that uh, little hook over there. And we're going to use our wise battery here. foam or something down in here. I think it'll be fine just like it is though. And then we need to get our uh, tape off of these ends here. goodie bag here came with these uh, <clears throat> terminal covers. We'll go ahead and get those on here. There seems to be a pretty good gap here to lay this cord flat across the top of this battery when I go to put the lid on. black one on there and this one I'm gonna make it orientated where the cord can go down this side panel here in the gap between the battery and the box there we go we'll tuck this one down in here and this one's gonna lay across the top and Try to feed that down in there while I go here. And 
And there we go. And then again in our bag of goodies is our four screws that we would put down in these four corners here. We're going to go ahead and do that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn this on. You'll see that nothing happens here. What that actually does though is activates the USB ports. You can see that light turning on or not. So each, each one of these has a little button to turn them off or on here. So this just turns on the battery but not the inverter. To turn on the inverter, you'd click this one here. And then we have different modes here. Going back to here, you can see these lights come on when that uh, little button there is pushed. So we have different modes here that's going to display various data. We have 14.4 volts in this battery. It is fully charged. I, I, I don't know how accurate this is going to be considering it's a lithium iron phosphate battery, but it's 122 volts. Wow. <laughs> that's really good. It didn't even make sense to me. 122 volts. That's nice. A lot of these, uh, a cheap inverter, you're lucky if you can get 110 volts. So this is a pretty good inverter in here for what it is. AC watts, DC volts. Okay, so here's a little indicator and a little light on which mode we're on. Let's go ahead and plug something in here. Now we'll go ahead and plug in our little tea kettle here. And, uh, Draw some wattage. Let's see, 662. Wow, that's a really quiet fan, too. The fan does kick on pretty much immediately. All right, so the port in the back is the exhaust. Well, somehow they're both exhausting. I'm not sure where it's going to pull in air from if they're both exhausting. So we're peaking out 675 watts on that. I'd have to hook up. There's only one AC port here. Let's go ahead and turn that off. It's too noisy. There's only one AC port. Uh, so I'd have to hook up a... Uh, I'm not sure if I have anything that's right at a thousand watts to test this out with. Well, let's go ahead and check this DC. Again, the AC does not need to be on for the DC ports to work. We'll go ahead and fire up my uh... It's actually a 24 volt coffee pot, but I actually make my coffee with this every day on a 12 volt plug in a um, power station. It would be nice if this displayed the wattage draw from the DC side. Let's see what happens if it if you have it on, if it shows the wattage draw. Yeah, there's no option here to show DC watts. You got DC volts, AC volts, AC watts, and then there's mode two. There's mode one and mode two. Not sure how you get it into mode two. I might actually have to read the instructions here. I'm not sure how you even get into this mode too. I don't see anything in the instructions about it. Yeah, if anybody knows how to get this into mode two, go ahead yeah, and so drop a comment. Yeah, so that's the only real the drawback that I below. see is that you can't see the uh, the draw on the battery on the DC side only when the one button it turns on the AC for the inverter. And I don't see how you get into mode two. I'm gonna research that and check it out. As you can see here's the 175 amp Anderson connector and all the gray 50 amp Anderson connectors are both input and output. And the black one, it would be 
for your solar panel connector. I can run that right over to my solar panels and it would just plug right in there. And the, the nice thing about these Anderson, you can't hook them up backwards. It's just impossible to, to hook them up backwards. And like I said, you could hook up a, an external battery to any of these ports here and have it charge from this battery to the other battery. Or you could hook up an MPPT charge controller to get to another end like this to connect it to your charge controller which I'll probably do in a future video just to show how that works is that the, there is a limit with the 10 amp MPPT you know you're gonna be at 100 100 watt solar panel 150 watts maybe max if you want to use a 200 watt panel or something even bigger you can always add your own small MPPT charge controller or even just one of these cheap uh, little PWM type uh, charge controllers only cost like 15, 20 bucks or less. One of those would be just fine to add a little bit more solar if you wanted to. And you can just stick it right on the top there if you wanted. I figured out that this strap actually goes over this here to strap and attach to your compartment or wherever you're hauling it, out, hauling it around at to keep this from rolling around in your compartment or your RV or on the front of your trailer or whatever you're doing. And then these would mount down on the ground like this and your strap would go through there and it's like a tie strap like you'd use for tying down a motorcycle or something like that. Anyway, so that wraps up this video. Uh, would I recommend it? I absolutely would. It's well made. It's powerful enough to do most tasks and you couldn't build it for the price. If you added up all of the components that you would need to buy between the backs, the box, the plugs, and the charge controller, and all these Anderson plugs, you just couldn't build it. At the time of this video, this is only 168 bucks. Like that's a smoking deal. And any kind of battery that you want in there, I pretty much only recommend lithium iron phosphate batteries for everything except for starting batteries or if you want to turn this into a jump starter or something like that, then you'd want to use a different kind of battery chemistry. But for a power station, there's no reason to not put a lithium iron phosphate in here. And so if you added up even that, uh, for $200, $250, you can get a, a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery nowadays. And $168 for this, for under $400, bucks, you got yourself a 1,000 watt power station with 100 amp hours of battery or 1,280 watt hours. Try and find a power station in that price range and you just can't do it. And the beauty of this is it's serviceable. It, it, uh, it may not have all the, the glam and fanciness of a power station, but... It makes up for all of that in its serviceability because you could replace any one of these parts that was to fail. Again, on a, on a prefab power station, you just wouldn't be able to do that. So this thing would be, should last a long, long time. Even if the inverter blew up, you could probably figure out how to replace it. That's about the only thing that seems to be standard or has its own uh, size. That MPPT charge controller, there's enough room in there. I think you could probably even replace that if you wanted to with something a little bit bigger. They do make some really nice uh, compact units uh, for like an inline style. Would fit in there quite well. In fact, I have a couple of those. And again, in a future video, I'll probably go ahead and do something like that. So that's it. The Vicity 1000 watt battery box power station.